The movie opens up in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where our main character, Arthur Bishop, is living peacefully, trying to forget his past life as a hitman. He appears to have faked his own death and has even changed his identity to stay anonymous. Arthur lives on a yacht in a beautiful tourist area by the sea. Each morning, he wakes up, enjoys his coffee while playing his favorite music, and then heads out for a jog. As a precaution, he has set up a bomb in the boat to deter potential thieves. <laughs> he also very likely woos local ladies with his bald head. One day, Arthur heads to a familiar restaurant having a sea view where everyone knows him. But as soon as he takes his seat, a random girl named Renee approaches him, claiming that she has been looking for him for a long time. She explains that she works for a dangerous boss who wants Arthur to eliminate three of his enemies discreetly, making their deaths appear natural. This is all happening very fast, and it obviously perplexes Arthur. So he tries to walk away, but Renee threatens to expose his location if he doesn't comply. Arthur then scans the area and notices that she is not alone. There are several goons holding different weapons. When Renee tries to take a picture of him, he quickly snaps a photo of her instead, catching her off guard. Celebrities should do that more often. Things escalate and the girl pulls out a gun, but before she can use it, Arthur pushes the table towards her, restricting her movement. All the goons also attack Arthur at the same time, but since he is the protagonist, he beats them all without even breaking a sweat. Feeling outnumbered, he then seizes an opportunity to escape by jumping on the roof of a passing sky tram. God damn, that escalated fast. However, Renee and her men follow suit, trying to shoot him from inside the tram. Renee even attempts to climb up to him, but before she can do so, Arthur decides to make a daring jump onto the back of a hand glider <laughs> to successfully evade his pursuers. When night falls, he returns to his boat, only to find suspicious men inspecting it. This prompts him to activate the bombs he had strategically placed for emergencies. As a result, the expensive yacht explodes, and the threats are immediately nullified. Afterward, Arthur proceeds to an old container, where he stashes his weapons and tools, including forged passports and mobile phones. He then takes some money with him and relocates to a secluded island in Thailand. There, he reunites with his friend Mai, who generously allows him to stay in his old hut, which had been untouched for years. After Mai leaves, Arthur enters his room and opens a part of the wooden floor, beneath which he had hidden more weapons and tools. Determined to protect himself and find out more about Renee, he begins investigating her through a secret system. Soon, he uploads Renee's picture he clicked earlier and uncovers her ties to a dangerous criminal named Crane, someone with whom Arthur has a dark history. The following day, a beautiful woman named Gina enters Mai's beach resort, seeking first aid supplies for her bruises. Mai notices the injuries and inquires about them, but Gina doesn't say a word and leaves. That night, Mai hears screams coming from a nearby boat and witnesses Gina being violently mistreated by a man called Frank. Goddamn Frank. Concerned for her safety, Mai rushes to Arthur for help, even though he is reluctant to get involved. Nevertheless, feeling a sense of responsibility towards Mai, he takes a look at the incident through his binoculars and heads to the boat. Despite his attempt to reason with Frank, the latter tries to use a weapon and a physical altercation ensues. In the end, Frank accidentally hits his head on a metal pole and dies on the spot. Whoopsie doodah, says Jason Statham. When Gina sees the lifeless body, she passes out. Mai manages to bring her safely to the shore while Arthur searches the boat. To his surprise, he discovers a gun, Gina's passport, and a phone that includes a picture of himself. Unnerved by the discovery, Arthur sets the boat on fire and returns to the hut. After this, he angrily wakes Gina and, showing her the picture, confronts her about her connection to Crane. Initially, she refuses to say anything, but when Arthur points a gun at her, she admits that she was blackmailed into working for Crane, who holds some something significant over her. Following this, Gina reveals that she used to run a shelter for human trafficking victims in Cambodia. Life was pretty normal, and everything was pleasant. But that all changed one day when Crane's henchmen killed one of her staff members. They then forced Gina into accepting the mission and threatened to harm the children under her care. Ugh, things were so simple when I was just trafficking humans. The next day, Arthur notices a boat nearby with some men observing the shore. He suspects that they must be sent by Crane to keep an eye on Gina's mission. To throw them off, Arthur and Gina pretend to be a couple by engaging in traditional Thai customs. As the evening progresses, Gina apologizes to Arthur for entangling him in her dangerous predicament. At the same time, Arthur shares his own painful history, revealing that he was once an orphan sold to a gangster who trained child soldiers. He mentions that Crane was with him during those dark times, and they were very 
close to each other. However, when the going got tough, Arthur fled the scene, leaving his friend behind. Arthur believes that this is the reason why Crane is trying to exact revenge on him. As the two continue sharing their life stories, their bond grows stronger, and they end up boning hard. After reassuring Gina of her safety, Arthur reveals his plan to take down Crane and promises not to carry out the three kills as demanded. Instead, he intends to eliminate Crane himself. In a heartfelt gesture, he gives Gina his father's watch, a precious memory from his past, and asks her to take care of it till he returns. However, their plans take a sudden turn when a group of policemen suddenly arrive at the beach, and one of them is identified as Crane's man. Arthur tries to fight them off, but this time he's overpowered, and Gina is eventually abducted. To save her, he agrees to meet with Crane, and they finally come face to face after all these years. The bad guy then gives Arthur a daunting ultimatum. To free Gina, he must execute three kills while making them appear natural. The first target is Krill, a notorious arms dealer imprisoned in Malaysia under tight security. To prepare, Arthur obtains explosives disguised as chewing gum, shark repellent in a skin cream tin, and a hidden capsule in a cigarette. He also creates a fake ID and adopts the guise of a wanted criminal. Afterwards, as he walks on the streets of Malaysia, the police officers take him into custody and send him to prison. Once inside the Malaysian prison, Arthur gathers intel on Krill and discovers that his henchmen constantly shadow him due to the numerous threats on his life. Arthur cleverly steals a knife from a prisoner during lunchtime and later intervenes when a former henchman attempts to assassinate Krill, saving his life. Why didn't he just let him die and say he did it? Impressed by his actions, Krill invites him to dinner, agreeing to leave his men outside. Arthur takes full advantage of this opportunity and executes Krill. He then stages the whole thing as if the man committed the unthinkable. To escape, Arthur distracts Krill's men, telling them not to disturb Krill as he's praying. He then turns on the security alarm and creates a hole in the prison wall with the explosive gum he brought. He also swallows the tracking pill given by Crane and uses shark repellent to jump into the water unnoticed. After successfully evading capture, he rejoins Crane's men on a fishing boat, who were waiting for his arrival in the middle of the ocean. One day and two to go, chips. In the next scene, Crane provides video proof of Gina's safety and assigns the next target, Adrian Cook, a human trafficker in Australia. He also provides him a time limit of 36 hours to eliminate the target. Without wasting any time, Arthur conducts thorough surveillance and learns that Cook's penthouse is heavily fortified, except for a cantilever pool extending over the streets. Arthur then devises a plan to infiltrate Cook's penthouse from below. For this, he disguises himself as a millionaire and schedules a meeting with the realtor of the building. Arthur pretends that he is interested in buying an apartment, which is right below Cook's penthouse, and when the realtor is distracted, he makes a copy of the keys. The following day, Disguised as a professional technician, Arthur sets out on his mission. Using his duplicate key, he gains access to the apartment that the realtor showed him earlier and opens up a glass shield to climb up to the swimming pool. Soon, he reaches under the pool, drills a hole, and sets up a special explosive there. At the same time, Cook jumps into the pool for his regular swim. He suddenly spots Arthur. Nice day for a dip, love. But before he can call for help, the glass breaks, leading to his demise. Meanwhile, Crane witnesses the incident on the news and smiles, appreciating Arthur's genius. Later, during a video call, Gina cleverly provides Arthur with information about the boat's hull number she is captured in by positioning herself near a window. The latter then calls the boat company and traces its location using the number. After getting the exact location, he hires a helicopter and flies there, carrying a bag of equipment. In the next scene, Arthur stealthily enters the boat and kills the guards one by one. However, he is eventually captured while trying to rescue Gina. After a while, Crane shows up and warns him to never try this again. If he does, Gina will immediately be shot dead. Next, Arthur is assigned his final target, Max Adams, an American arms dealer with a heavily guarded fortress. After a bit of searching, our hero discovers that Crane is using these kills to eliminate his competition in the arms trade, prompting Arthur to have his doubts about the mission. You mean to tell me that by helping him, I'm helping him? Fuck! However, he proceeds with his plan. Arthur shoots one of Adams' guards from a distance, then hides in an emergency helicopter to reach Adams' fortress. Inside, he disables security cameras with a jammer and skillfully takes down the guards. As the building goes on high alert, Adams is escorted to his panic room, but Arthur delays them with elevator malfunctions. Surprisingly, when Adams reaches his room, Arthur proposes an alliance to take down Crane. He somehow convinces Adams to cooperate, and they start their plan by faking his death. Sometime later, as Adams is inspecting his submarines, a well 
planned bomb explodes there, causing him to drown. Fortunately, Arthur is prepared underwater, and he swiftly comes to Adams' rescue. Sharing an oxygen tank, he safely guides him away from the explosion to the nearest beach. Meanwhile, Crane witnesses the incident on television, and news reports declare Adams buried underwater due to the explosion. In the aftermath, Arthur contacts Crane over the phone, claiming responsibility for the third kill. However, Crane remains doubtful until he sees concrete evidence of Adams' death, and requests to see his target's dead body first. In response, Arthur urges Crane to visit Adams' submarine and find his dead body there, eager to confirm the kill. Crane orders his men to locate Adams' body and to take care of Arthur once and for all. Arthur sets up a series of lethal traps as Crane's henchmen descend one by one. They find themselves falling into the cunningly laid traps or becoming victims of Arthur's stealthy approach. With each passing moment, Crane becomes increasingly aware that Arthur poses a significant threat to his plans. Realizing that he is the next target, Crane resorts to using Gina as bait, placing her at sight on the boat to lure Arthur. As our hero approaches underwater, he notices Gina standing near the helipad. He then launches a ruthless assault on Crane's guards, killing them one by one. Gina also tries to help, but becomes injured during the scuffle. Seeing this, Arthur quickly secures her in an emergency release pod to ensure her safety. After this, he deftly eliminates all of Crane's henchmen and finally confronts him in a brutal hand-to-hand -hand showdown. Realizing that all of his men are dead, Crane quickly activates the bomb in the boat. Following this, a tense fight ensues between the two, but Arthur quickly gains the upper hand and binds Crane to the boat with an anchor chain. However, just after a few seconds, the boat explodes, seemingly killing them both. From a distance, Gina watches in despair, believing that Arthur has sacrificed himself to take down Crane. Heartbroken, she then returns to Cambodia with the kids, seeking solace in her work. The days turn into months, and Gina has moved on from the incident. But one morning, Arthur shows up out of nowhere. He appears to be completely fine, taking Gina by surprise. Hello, love. Meanwhile, Adams investigates the remnants of Crane's boat and unravels the ingenious plan that enabled Arthur's escape. He finds video evidence of a diving bell, a chamber containing trapped air that allowed Arthur to survive the explosion. Impressed by his resourcefulness, Adams decides to delete the security footage to safeguard Arthur's future. The movie ends with Arthur's survival remaining a closely guarded secret. He and Gina are finally free from Crane's grip, and their reunion marks a new chapter in their lives, filled with hope and the promise of a brighter future. Hello, love. Hello, love. Hello, love. Hello, love. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.